Yeah, this is this goes over the lore that you don't really see until the very end of the run. So we'll not worry about that. Go ahead and start in three, two, one, go. Alright, so this is Tilo. He's a very cute mouse. He's currently in jail. Alright, we're broken out of jail. Uh, so the important tech that we're going to be doing for this entire thing is uh, using maps or opening your inventory is very good and lets you just gain control of your character when you're really not supposed to. So whenever I like trigger a cutscene or pick up an an or pick up something and get an animation or anything like that, I'm going to be either preferably opening my map, but also I could be um, opening the inventory and that just gives me control again. That's going to be used literally for the entire run. I almost alerted that guard. It's fine though. Alright, so we're in jail. So the first step is to actually bust out of jail. Uh, I picked up a bunch of bottles. Bottles are useful because they can knock out guards and they can also knock down items. Guards are real dumb so we don't really have to worry about them too much. So here's a, a longer cutscene that you can just gain control during with the, the inventory. The other thing he's been picking up during the run has been uh, a lot of food items. So you might have seen grain, mushrooms, uh, bugs. Uh, those are used to regen your health, and your stamina is tied to your health in this game. So uh, Dr. T is going to be constantly mashing sprint to keep sprinting. Yeah, you can see my health bar goes from yellow to red. That's uh, using the stamina. I'm going to bottle this guy for safety. You don't really have to do it, but eh, why not? There's plenty of extra bottles we can pick up in the run. All right, so we've broken out of jail completely now. Uh, our first objective is to find the person who left us the key that let us break out of jail. But while we're doing that, we're going to uh, make a couple steps along the way. So I just picked up uh, a piece of armor. You can, you can explain how the costumes and such work. Yeah, so there's several different costumes in the game, and mechanically they give you several benefits. So for instance, there is a thief's outfit that gives you uh, some increased stamina regen and better hiding capabilities from these guards. Uh, this game is sort of a stealth game, but the way we play it, it's not really a stealth game. Uh, the guard's armor is why we don't play this game as a stealth game. Uh, eventually, we will be able to equip the guard's armor and move around completely unhindered by any of the guards. Yeah, so we're just... Picking up a couple things along the way. Uh, we also picked up some money. We will need money for two places in the run. Um, they're just there's like a number of different money piles you can pick up, and that's enough money for the whole run, which is convenient. So you see, I was being chased by the mice or the rats there, uh, but they're kind of slow and dimwitted, and they give up easily. Oh, also, I'm now out of bounds. Uh, just a little bit of parkouring, and I'm on top of this roof, which you're not supposed to get to. There's a lot of weird geometry yeah. here. You'll see that tower in the in the distance reload, which is kind of an indicator that you're not where you're supposed to be when stuff starts deloading and reloading randomly. All right, when I jumped back into bounds, my camera didn't freak out, which is nice. Uh, if the camera gets stuck inside of things, which can happen when you're clipping, it can kind of freak out and warp between like forwards and backwards really rapidly. Uh, that's pretty bad, but it didn't happen there, fortunately. Uh, and here we meet Silas. This is the first uh, main uh, NPC that you talk to. He gives you like the first quest. He's the one who like let you out of uh, jail with the key. Uh, he's going to talk a whole bunch. Whoops. Uh, we don't really care too much about what he wants. We're just going to kind of mash through dialogue. You might hear that uh, most of the time I'm using. Oops. Most of the time I'm using keyboard and mouse, but you might be able to hear me mashing a gamepad right now. Uh, gamepad is actually faster for dialogue and menus, but I just am way more comfortable with keyboard and mouse for everything else. So I'm going to be switching between the two for the entire run. I just have the gamepad like sitting in front of my keyboard and I mash it whenever I need. All right, so we're going to get to the first glitch here that you can go ahead and explain how this works. 
So basically what he's going to do is he's holding down jump while he activates the bed to sleep. And normally that puts you right next to the bed, so you are preparing to sleep, you can select a time and confirm this menu. But by holding down jump and then using the map to animation cancel, uh, like he talked about earlier for animation canceling out of like item pickups and small cutscenes, what he basically did was he got control with the cutscene, he held B, which lets him climb up on objects so he can get over the railing there, and then he falls into a death plane. And uh, since the sleep prompt is still up, he can get the death message, but sleep just before it comes up on the screen. And that uh, causes something called reversible death glitch, which basically confuses the game and we... Well, we can die. It's just the prompt doesn't pop up after. Just uh, eat some food and then we'll be better again. So dying is no longer a concern for the rest of the run, because that'll stay in effect for the entire thing. Also, I can fly here. Uh, if you use the fire steel, you can just kind of like warp forwards while you're using it. And you can just use it repeatedly, and that lets you just kind of fly and go out of bounds. And then go back inbounds here uh, to the armory. Uh, the armory is useful. We need to come here much later on. Uh, but right now it contains a piece of the guard armor, which is... Uh, kind of important. Oh. Uh, also, we have this snail slime. Snail slime is life. Uh, these guards have helmets on their heads, which means we can't bottle them. Uh, but snail slime just makes them fall over regardless of where you hit them. Uh, so it'll just knock them out no matter what. Yeah, it's just that slippery. Yeah. Hit them in the face and they trip. <laughs> Uh, this is Gusto and Fatale, or Ghost of a Tale, if you read their names together. Uh, very cute. Uh, they have like a long series of side quests, but the only thing we really care about is they have a, uh, a guard's helmet. And in order to get it from them, we have to write a song, because we're a minstrel. So uh, we're going to pick the best lyrics for this and create a song for them, which will be appearing later on. Wait, will it? No, I'm thinking of a different song. Um, yeah. So now we have the full guard armor. Uh, we can... Uh, sorry, we have the full guard armor, which is one of the two things that we needed to get from... or for Silas, that he told us to go get. Uh, the second one is an antidote for the spiders, the spooky scary spiders that are in the catacombs. Don't worry, we won't actually see any. What is happening? I can't jump here. Whoa! Yeah, th this jump's really tricky. It's dependent on like camera angle and the exact direction you hold the stick in. I I've never actually seen it. Just it's just okay. There it goes. It was just refusing to let me jump at all, which I've never seen before. So that's fun. Yeah, I usually get that. <laughs> it also lagged really hard. This game will lag randomly lag spike. Um, it's usually not too big a deal, but oh, sometimes it it will just kind of freak out. Um, so I can't see where I'm going right now, so I'm going to be a little bit safe and just let myself kind of fall down slowly to where I can see the actual uh, level load in. Uh, but we're going to go down into the sewers now and talk to uh, a plague doctor who's just hanging out down there. Come on, level. There it is. All right, we were like perfectly above where we needed to be, but whoops, I accidentally raised up the elevator. Oh well, that's fine. Slight time loss. Alright, so this is Faustus. Uh, he tells us that he's been waiting for us and we need to go uh, tend his still while he goes and does something. So we're just gonna completely ignore his still because it's fine. If I don't look at it then nothing is wrong. And we can just go ahead and leave and make our way to the next objective that we'll have to do anyway, which is collecting some spider venom so he can make an antidote. This is the only spider that you see in the game, uh, yeah. although it's dead. <laughs> it's dead and so. you don't really see it anyway, because the, uh, it's got a web covering it that we can't really see past. So he gives us the thing. Like, even though we're nowhere near where we were, he still talks to us. Because the game just kind of assumes. Yeah, I like there. to think he's just yelling really loud. He probably is. He's really mad. 
I'm not a rat. I'm a mouse. Excuse me. Alright, so we picked up the, the venom from the spooky scary spider that you couldn't actually see. And we can head back and get the antidote. We don't actually need the antidote. Uh, there's no way to actually get poisoned in this game. So I don't really understand why it forces you to get it, but, eh, well. It's fine. Uh, here we have another instance, or another feature of this game, which is the day-night cycle. Uh, which I can explain as I accidentally wait for this elevator because I'm dumb. Uh, so the game, if you look in the menu here, it's 2.31 p.m. Uh, it has a day-night cycle, it has sleeping, you can sleep and wait um, a specific amount of time. And there's a few characters that have uh, schedules. Only like two or three characters, but still, some of them have schedules. So we need to deal with uh, one character schedule and make sure it's a very specific time because we want to get them. Oh, this guy's going to wake up. I'm going to have to bottle him. Oh, no, maybe not. Okay, never mind. It's fine. Uh, we want one character to be in one place so we can talk to him once and then be in his other place when we talk to him the second time. Also, picking up this map is the hardest thing in the entire universe. And so now we just slept for like 20 hours in big mood. Uh, we only really need to sleep for three to uh, advance the quest, but again, we want to keep a, a very specific schedule. Also, I'm sliding around on my back here, as you do when you sleep for 20 hours. Yeah, so that sliding animation is part of the uh, animation cancel. If you take a hard fall in the game, which is just some really arbitrary distance that changes, uh, yeah. then you can cancel out of it uh, and slide around in your back for a while. All right. Uh, so now what we're supposed to do is we have the armor and we have the antidote so we can go back to um, Silas. However, we, we already know what he's going to send us to do. Uh, so we're going to make it a quick detour and just go ahead and do uh, the next objective he's going to tell us to do ahead of time because it's convenient. You can go you can go and do this objective anytime. Uh, unfortunately, Silas won't acknowledge it until you actually have the quest, which is a problem with the vast majority of skips in this game is that you can go ahead and do whatever you want early. NPCs just won't care. They refuse to acknowledge it until you actually have the quest, the relevant quest. Yeah, so that's why we needed to go get the anti-venom, even though it's not needed at all for the run. Uh, we needed yeah. to complete the quest that gives us the quest that's needed for the run. Oh, I might be stuck. I might have to reload here. Oh, no, it's fine. Uh, so yeah, you can see we're currently dead. Never mind, we're fine. I know it looks bad, but we're not dead. I mean, we're kind of dead. It's complicated. Uh, we're the reversibly dead. <laughs> the, the important thing is the game doesn't think we're dead. Alright, uh, here's a ghost. Uh, the ghost is like uh, an old warrior from a long time ago. We can't quite remember everything. Uh, also, uh, reloading an autosave will fix our like dead state, which allows us to move normally and everything like that, which is nice. Uh, so here's a couple more glitches. Uh, first of all, in the armor, like it's a big heavy armor and we're a little we're a little mouse. So you're supposed to move really slow when you have the armor on. You're not supposed to be able to sprint. But if you equip it when your model is deloaded because your camera is too close, you'll actually just have normal movement with it, which is super convenient. Uh, and then secondly, there is a chest that we're holding. This is a heavy object. And when you pick up a heavy object, you move really slow. But if you equip a bottle while you're holding a heavy object, it's, you just move normal speed. I, I don't know why. It's literally only bottles that do that. Also dialogue graphic. Uh, so now we have the, the MacGuffin that we needed. And we could just head back. Uh, but that's slow and awkward. So we're going to do something, well, what we call the floor is lava. So you can go ahead and explain how this works. 
basically, um, the stream might be a little delayed uh, in terms of dialogue, so I'm not quite sure where you're at. But basically, the way Flora's Lava works um, is he will force the game to load his prior position to a place that he wants to go to. So in this case, on top of Silas's tower. Then he's going to load his prior save, uh, jump out of the barrel, and keep jumping, and try not to touch the floor for too long because it's lava. If he does this right and falls out of bounds, the game uh, has a sort of safety built in where it will try and put you to your last position that you were at. So by falling out of bounds right here, the game says, I'm going to put you back where you were at, and hopefully it'll get us to the, the tower. So we call this the uh, save warp. Unfortunately, it doesn't work the first time. It's kind of finicky. Sometimes it'll just not work. Uh, that time it was, it recorded my position right when I left the barrel, which is really uncommon. It was actually perfect otherwise, so that's a little unfortunate. Uh, and obviously you'd want to do this first try, uh, but sometimes the game will just say no. Say so actually you are indeed standing there the ground you are currently on is not lava and we are perfectly able to put you there and we have to kind of convince the game that yes indeed this is lava uh, there's also two death planes that we fall through but you know that's not a big deal the game is being a real jerk today normally this is like second try so uh, fortunately this is no oh, that's not gonna work you can also get a climb up animation like right in front of the stairs, which also doesn't make sense. Uh, if that happens, it's most likely not going to work. Oh my god. Come on, game. This is getting ridiculous. Yeah, so uh, to make Dr. T's uh, failures look a little less uh, bad, so I was testing a different route earlier today with a different warp, and I spent 18 minutes trying to get this same style of floor is lava warp to, to work. So this is the most finicky trick in the game. Um, we haven't really figured out a way yet to make it a little easier on us, uh, but maybe someday. I'm actually shocked. Several of these should have worked. The game just decided no. It's fine. We have plenty of space in the estimate, don't you worry. This is definitely the worst one we do in the run as well. Oh, okay. It, it ate my input there. Oh, yes, it did. Uh, you can also try avoiding those rocks uh, in front of the doorway. I know those can be a little uh, annoying and sometimes it like causes the game to update your position if you hit them there. Uh, I will reiterate that I do really enjoy this game. It's just a little rough around the edges. A little fur around the edges? I don't know. So it's not exactly a bastion. There we go. We did it. Oh, Good job. I forgot to, you actually have to put on the armor now to show them that you did indeed get the armor. Uh, also, since I died to a, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, a death plane, my command, or my, my commander, I just read the text. Uh, my camera's a little bugged, so I have to, it, it like won't be blocked by any collision. So I have to like jump in and out of a barrel, which will fix the, uh, the camera and let me do this glitch again so I can run with the armor. All right, we did it. So he tells us to go down into the catacombs and get a ring, and we go, hey, look, I already have the ring. And he's like, wow, you're amazing. Uh, and then he has to go find some more rings, so we have to ask the ghost where the other ring went. Uh, da -da -da. During this part, did you want me to explain some of the lore from the beginning of the game? Sure. All right, so Dwinlin, the ghost that we're talking to, uh, she was a major, major legendary warrior in the War of the Green Flame, which is that green flame that we saw in the very intro of the game. The green flame basically uh, did some scary things, and the animal races of the world rose up to try and fight the green flame and were barely able to succeed. Um, during this fight, the, the mice of the game uh, unfortunately decided to take actions on their own, which kind of 
led to them becoming second class citizens and through uh, a whole series of things where you and your wife accidentally insulted the rat king um, or the rat baron sorry you were able to uh, get thrown in jail and that's why we're here all right um, everything terrible is happening why can I not use it okay Jesus uh, I unfortunately dropped my input again, which caused me to fall, which isn't that big of a deal because I can I don't care about dying. Uh, and then it, for some reason, wasn't letting me use the door because the guard was standing in the way. Uh, but ideally, I would have just flown from that tower over to this area here and just skipped that bit of running around that I did. Uh, so yeah, we had to find, we have to go find the name of the. Uh, Dwin Lane's lover, which is Hythe, which you read right here. Uh, we also need some holly berries, which we'll be using uh, a little bit later on. We need three of them. So we get two of them here. Oh, oh man. Gammon's being really mean to my inputs right now. Alright, I want to try something. Uh, not right now, but... So yeah, we, uh, so now we need to go, oh, well, okay, fine, whatever. Everything's fine. I just have to apply this glitch again to get my, uh, armor speed again. Uh, the point of it is the, the second ring, like, uh, we're collecting a bunch of rings for Silas right now. Um, the second ring is under a pile of rubble over here, which lead to another area. And uh, in order to get it, we have to blow up this area. And uh, this is unfortunately like one of the few things that will actually soft lock the game if you do this too early, because you can just like clip out of bounds and get the get the uh, explosives and blow it open and everything. Uh, but it just kind of will soft lock later on. Yeah, and that's due um, because of the quest trigger. Uh, the actual explosion going off is a trigger for a quest. But if you do it early, you don't have that quest. So the trigger fires without anything to act. Yeah. Uh, also, we're going to take a little detour here to talk to the commander. We were supposed to talk to him. Uh... After you get the armor, you're supposed to go report to him for the first time. Uh, but obviously we just clipped out of bounds and went to the catacombs immediately instead. So we're going to do a small detour, pick up some items from his room, and then talk to him now. Uh, he like gives you the second dialogue. It's just like, oh my god, what happened to the catacombs? And you're just like, yeah, everything's fine. Don't worry about it. And then you talk to him again, and he's like, who are you? <laughs> it's kind of silly. Yeah, one of my favorite things about this game is how all the rats assume that if you're wearing armor, you're just a really small rat. Yeah, private scale. Small in stature, but not in courage. Is that what it is? Yes. That's how it goes. Uh, the funny thing is, like, you can talk to him without the armor on. Like, he's just in the Harbor Master's office uh, half the time, and, like, you don't... Like, in here, you need armor to get to him, but there you don't, and he just doesn't care. Which is odd. <laughs> oh. uh, this is the blacksmith. He's also an important character, but we don't really talk to him very much. Uh, but he does have the key to the explosive store, which we do need. So we're going to take that. Also going to make a save for later on here. So we will be warping here later. So now that we have the key to the explosive store, we can actually advance the quest without it soft locking. Because even if you have uh, the quest to blow it up, it doesn't work until you actually get the key, which is kind of annoying. But yeah, here's the thing. Here's an explosive. It's big and heavy, but again, we can equip a bottle to not care. Just a reminder to pick up uh, extra sticks at the top of the stairwell for later. Oh, I picked them up earlier. But yeah, you're right, this is Don't a better place to pick right them up. Uh, 
Uh, we can do some parkour here, or some mouse core, I guess. Aha! Alright. Instead of just running around. Uh, we can kind of place this over here and set it off, and then walk in front of the rocks and it'll blow them up, but not us, which is convenient. So we don't have to like stand back and wait for it to explode. Uh, where's the holly? There it is. So yeah, now we have this kind of annoying collect-a-thon segment where uh, later on in the game we're going to need seven gold nuggets and three holly berries. So we collect a last holly berry uh, and then we need to collect a bunch of gold nuggets. We also need a couple more costume pieces that are kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but we do use this opportunity to, to make a save in a convenient place to warp to later. Because this area of the shore, you mostly only care about this in the very end of the game. But we're gonna we're gonna come here early because we need the uh, costume pieces and nuggets. I also oh. enjoy how everyone who plays this game has a different way of getting down shore. <laughs> yeah, that's something I never actually bothered looking into optimizing is movement. I just go vaguely in a straight line. It's fine. That's uh, how also, calculus works. You're doing fine. There's also some purple smoke here. That's evil and will kill you. Uh, avoid it if you can. Alright, another save. So yeah, that... Uh, the two, that had two nuggets and some... Uh, pirate gear that we picked up because we need the the pirate outfit for later And now we have to get back uh, And to get back we're gonna do another slightly interesting route also there's undead or just normal skeletons not undead Why would they be undead? That's silly. Just perfectly normal skeletons Very silly. Uh, Pick up our last two golden nuggets and uh, make our way to a different area, which is the harbor. Uh, I'm gonna equip my armor just for safety here. You can just nail slam them. No, I wanna go make the save in the other place. Oh, that's right, I forgot you do that strat. Yeah. So yeah, there's a, there's a couple guards down here. So this is the harbor, this barrel, remember it, we'll be coming back here later. This guard's a jerk, because he actually completely blocks the doorway. Oh my god, lag. And this is the Harbor Master's office. You can see the commander, who was just up above a second ago, is now here. Which is very convenient, because we need him to be here. Uh, and we're going to make a save. And then we're going to load a different save, so you can probably already guess what's going to happen. Uh, did you do a full save there for later? I don't know if this, I might have messed this up. We'll see. Uh, so here is this, this big river down here. Which, uh, conveniently enough, doesn't actually exist. Because we could just fall through and we're back up here. And that's how the floor is lava. It's supposed to go. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. Okay. Uh... So now we have to go to back to Gusto and Fatale. Yeah, due to all the, the side quests that we have to do for them, um, which unfortunately we don't get to see in this run, uh, they are the best characters in the game, in my opinion at least. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, this is the basket. You're intended to use this to get up and down from Silas most of the time. Uh, as you can probably tell, we're not going to use it very often. It's unfortunate uh, that it's the fastest route for like two or three specific times because I wish we could just ride it out completely, but uh, it's not yeah. really a, a nicer way of getting back up from certain places. Basket is the most annoying 12 seconds of anyone's life. Yeah. Alright. So we ask them for the ring and they say it's off by 
uh, off with oh yeah here's the here's the song we can we can look at a little bit for it how long does this take may I present to you uh, the greatest of crooks a minute but you'll never have read about them in your books brothers and sisters they're siblings in crime will never be caught and they've never done time yeah so those are those are the songs in this game there's several of them uh, unfortunately you can just skip them straight out because they're they're actually pretty entertaining I'll show off one one other one later on So we're heading up to the uh, commissary, which is a place we'll get much more familiar with later on. But for now, we just need to go find the notorious uh, gambler and gamble away some money. All right. Uh, chat, high or low? Quick. Oh god, the delay is actually going to make this impossible. Fallborn, I'd high or low? low. Okay, we're going to go with low then. So we're going to bet with him. High or low? So we're gonna go low, I'm certain. I rolled a five and a six, oh. <laughs> so low is below seven. Oh, uh, we got 11, <laughs> that's like real high. <laughs> it's actually slightly faster if you lose, you have less dialogue. So nice. congrats, I just saved you some time. <laughs> All right, and then you just, uh, you bet again with him and it's, you always win. Uh, you bet your loot for his ring. And you, you will always win that bet, fortunately. That would be crazy if it was like a ridiculous RNG for that one. Oh man, if you went seven, that would have been crazy. Do you win more money if you guess seven? I've never actually tried uh, yes, it. Yes, I, th I think the payout is like three to one if you guess seven. Nice. Alright. Uh, come on. So now we have uh, news of our wife. Uh, our wife is apparently in a prison transport. Uh, down in the harbor. And conveniently, we just made a save in the harbor. So. Let's go ahead and warp there. This time we're in a barrel up by Silas. Well, it turns out we can still do this fine. Well, that might not yeah, work. The floor is not lava here, but the cannon sure is. Cannon is evil lava. I hate the cannon. This probably won't work, but we'll try it anyway. Yeah, okay, so that actually clipped me through the floor and made me splat on the ground down there. Yeah, so funny enough, uh, so sometimes, especially here, you'll get climbing animations on the cannon. Uh, those don't count as floor, so you're fine, as long as you uh, jump soon enough after you come out of the climbing animation. It also just really likes to eat your jump, where you'll just like be mashing jump and nothing will happen. It's real sad. All right, there we go. So I died, but again, that's fine. I'm going to jump in and out of the uh, thing here to, uh, that didn't work. Come on, camera. Come on, do the thing. What the fuck? I'm not camera? sure it works in the, in the dead state like that. It, I'm certain it does. Yeah, there it goes. That was weird. All right. So we're dead, but again, that's fine. We don't have to worry about that too much. And suddenly there's a ship down there that wasn't there before. And we're going to talk to some other mice. I'm going to reload and fix my, my thing. Interestingly, normally you cannot change your clothes when you're beside somebody, but uh, Tam and Pharaoh don't care. You can get naked in front of them if you want. I think it's a species thing. Mm, maybe. But I think Gusto and Fatality do care. So, it's it's strange. I guess they're on like a, a prisoner ship. They've, they've seen worse things. Uh, so they're going to go tell us to go collect a bunch of different things all in a row. Uh, but we actually already have most of the things. So, like, they're going to go tell us to get the key. I have the key. Cool. And then you need to go get the ship's itinerary, and I already have the itinerary. Cool. Um, 
then... Oh, uh, what, what are we going to do about the itinerary? Well, let's put an extra stop on it. There, good, cool. And then all we have to do is go talk to the commander, who, because of the um, day-night cycle manipulation we did, is waiting in the, the harbor master office right up here. Uh, and he's got a surprise for us. Uh, unfortunately, we have to well, we have to skip it to go fast, but we'll get a we'll get a little taste of it here. So, uh, listen to this. He fires up his lyre. My lovely's lovely. Yeah. Oh, this one's got a long intro. My lovely's eyes they shine and sparkle. Her whiskers all coarse and bristly. Like rubies glowing in the darkly. Darkle. Gotta Dark, rhyme with sparkle. Darkle. Ah. Her lips are red and soft and kissly. Amazing. Alright, this goes on for quite a while, so... <laughs> we'll skip the rest. Uh, you have to correctly identify what rhymes he did. Uh, so you do have to actually pay attention to that song. Which is pretty amazing. Slide around on your butt. Alright. Why is that? Right. So now you talk Albert. to these people. Uh, so Albert in chat just said Loot Arena of Mouse Time, and I 100% support that name. So in case it wasn't evident uh, from some of the chat dialogues that are quickly scrolling by, uh, our wife, who was supposed to be on the ship, is not on the ship. Uh, Tamlin and Pharaoh are a mother and son prisoner. Uh, apparently our wife decided that she was going to swap places so they could remain together. How nice of her. What a nice lady. And uh, so the, the, the mice on that ship told us that our wife could be found on a different ship named the Wrath Skull. Uh, Alright, so now we're taking the elevator up. This is how you're supposed to get down to the catacombs the first time. Uh, we never actually opened the door, uh, but that'll be fine. So here we're getting dialogue that we're supposed to get like much earlier on when you first go to the catacombs. Uh, this is where you can actually use the, the anti-venom to heal up this poor, sick, dying squad leader. Unfortunately, that's slow, so he'll just have to die. Uh, funnily enough, if you save him, it says that he'll be brought back to the infirmary, but the infirmary doesn't actually exist on the map anywhere, so he just disappears. Which is kind of funny. Uh, these are pine cones. They're the best item in the game. Unfortunately, that's the only one we use. And here we get the king's stockings. That's uh, a piece of the king's outfit that, unfortunately, we have to make this detour to get. It's just not really a better time to get it. All right, so now we're going back up. And again, the the door to this elevator is closed, and it's not a normal door that you can just open. It has to be opened by a guard. Uh, the guard is currently standing on the other side of the wall up here, which is a problem. Uh, fortunately, he doesn't care about doors, and he'll just walk through them, and then we can talk to him from behind his butt, and he'll open up the door for us. How nice. So following the normal pathway of the game, uh, way back when, after you get the armor and the anti-venom, uh, you go talk to Silas and he says, hey, you should go down to the catacombs. And then you get orders from the commander to go down into the catacombs, and then that guy will open the door for you. So since we already did that part of the quest, we have the orders like queued up somewhere. Yeah. All right, so now Silas is drunk. This is no longer a kids-friendly game because now we're dealing with alcoholism. Uh, but we need to find out why he's drunk, and to figure out why he's drunk, we need to make him not drunk, because he's horribly incoherent right now. And in order to make him not drunk, we have to get orders uh, from everybody in the kitchen. So this guy orders trout, uh, this guy orders the cook special, which uh, we don't actually know what that is, but we'll figure it out probably. This guy orders the leg, leg of lizard, which I accidentally talked to him 
twice. Uh, Silas should eat something. Cheese bill. So, we have all the orders, which is nice. So now we have to actually serve anything. Here's the carrot pie. This is actually the the chef special pie right here. So he's happy. We'll get some some cheese. Some cheese for Silas. And again, we're equipping the bottle for all of these things to go faster. Cheese. So Albert in chat says that uh, it was good on the game's creators, Seath, to not make the mouse cook Italian because that'd be too obvious. I wholeheartedly <laughs> agree. She is German. <laughs> the the uh, mice term for grandma, which is what they lovingly refer to uh, elder female mice as, is Oma, which mirrors the German Oma. Yeah, she's such a nice lady. I hope nothing bad happens to her. Yeah, she, she has a quest that we're not going to do to get her some honey uh, just for her cooking, but... Yeah. Alright, so Silas is now gone. Uh, when we were talking to Grandma, he kind of slipped out. And he's gone back up home to sleep. Which actually seems pretty reasonable. Uh, so here we actually have to like wait for the basket, because I for keep forgetting to route out a better place for this. But it's fine. We're just going to... What we're going to do is we're going to salute. And then his arm's going to twist around because it does that. <laughs> All right, that's the last time we have to see the basket. So move on past. Uh, Silas is up here in his bed already ready to sleep, which is convenient. So we're just gonna give him give him the sleep tonic and he's gonna pass out. Good night, Silas. Uh, now we have to go wait uh, apparently six hours. We know exactly exactly how long he sleeps for. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna go do that. Uh, while we're doing that we're going to go talk to the smith again because uh, we need some clothing. We need a costume for a king. So he takes our money uh, and then we also need uh, seven nuggets of gold so he can make us a crown. So we're going to give that to him right now. And it apparently takes him whoops, six hours to go make that crown. So How convenient. We're just, I'm also going to reload the save. So this is the normal speed with the armor. I mean, when you when you have to actually use the armor, this is what you this is what you move at. So yeah. Uh, did you make a courtyard save for later? Yeah, I did earlier. So we're gonna sleep for like twenty three hours or something like that. Perfectly healthy, and then go see the crown's ready. It's a beautiful crown. Excellent. And then we're going to go ahead and go out of bounds back up to... Oh, the lighting just changed completely. That was interesting. Why did it get brighter? Oops, I messed up the jump. Why did it get brighter when it got later? That makes no sense. What the hell? Okay. I shot out diagonally somehow that time. Uh, this, this jump's annoying, but it's not that annoying. I might have to bottle this guard, because he's right here. In fact, I'm going to just go ahead and do it. Alright, so Silas is awake now. He apparently also slept for 23 hours, because he has not left his bed. Uh, and he's just going to do a whole lot of lore. So I'll also, explain <laughs> it for people who are missing the chat. Is that yeah. cool? All right, so basically, um, the rings that 
Silas was having us fetch were the rings of the Rat Kings of old. There were, used to be eight Rat Kings, um, and previously there was only one, and he had no heir, so it kind of devolved into lords and barons and things like that. Turns out that uh, Silas was hunting for these rings because they belonged to his actual father, who was King Roderick, uh, the last Rat King. So Silas is a prince. So after learning about that, um, we kind of have a spark of inspiration, shall we call it. And then Silas is going to help us find where uh, Mera is. And so we know what ship she was on. And his logbook, unfortunately, says that that ship was lost in the island of Periclave, which is sort of like this mythical isle uh, thing. So now we need to go talk to a magpie uh, who are kind of masters of information. And uh, I'll let Dr. T take over. Yeah, so fortunately, we've already seen a magpie at some point. Uh, if you remember dialogue Ravik, uh, that was right up here. So there's well, there's the bird like clipping through the wall that you can see. Uh, so we're gonna warp back down there. Do this this one again, which is seemed like oh man, this is probably not gonna work now. Oh, now it's definitely not gonna work because my camera freaked Did you out. Get frog beard? Uh, I got a double climb up and then my camera messed up. All right. Do that again. Did, did you get frog beard, Dr. T? Oh, frog beard. You're, that's a good point. Thank you for that. Uh, we're not yep. going to go here yet because we have other collections to do first. Missed a step. Uh, same thing. We're still going to do a warp here. This is still, still what we want to do. Uh, come on. Warp's being a jerk today. So we're not going to warp down there. We're going to warp to uh, the jail. If it'll let me. Uh, Alright, this time this time it'll work. First try every time. Alright, so now we're back down in the jail. Uh, we opened this guy's door a while ago, but we never actually talked to him. So now we're going to go through the first conversation where we have to get him some some rot gut. Uh, Shoutouts to the video game rot gut. Oops. Give him this I just posted a link in chat for those who are interested. Uh, we do have a speedrunning Discord set up for this where the community just kind of hangs out. Um, it, Unfortunately, this game isn't as well known as we'd like it to be, so definitely come join us uh, if you're interested in the game. It's super cheap, uh, super easy to get into, and it's just a fantastic game. Definitely play it through casually before you start running it. Um, definitely. Yeah. All right. So uh, we got the frog's beard, because obviously that is a vital item. I'm going to eat some food, because... I don't like this low health thing. Do some expert sneaking. Yeah, so that's what we needed the holly berries for. He wanted to look really nice because uh, the, the grandma mouse that we saw in the commissary came to... Alright. Uh, we stopped and we picked up a few more items. And now we're going to do another warp. So this bed's weird. Uh, when you use it, you can get flipped over to the other opposite side of it. And then you're falling out of... You can fall out of bounds as it's doing little fade out. And you get an autosave in midair. Uh, that's really convenient. Because we can just uh, go ahead and mark our position here. And then when we load in this autosave, it immediately gives us the prompt. And it just warps us to our last spot, which is right here. Alright, so now we're a king. Uh, we're also going to need a... I'm going to save for this because I might mess up the setup. Uh, we need a banner from way below that the magpie is going to ask us for. But if we stand in a certain spot, we can actually just snipe the lever. Just so. Uh, and then we don't have to actually worry about going down there at all. First try, that was good. Yeah. So this is a magpie. They're like, I guess, oracles or something in this universe. Uh, they also only talk to royalty, so we're gonna dis so we disguise as a king to do so. 
dialogue's being really stupid. We're gonna mash through this dialogue. Uh, also, oracles are not stupid. And she sees right through our disguise. But we're minstrels, and minstrels are better than kings. So that's good. Uh, we're gonna sing her some, some... We're gonna give her some new lore, which is about Silas. Since that's brand new lore that nobody knows about. Uh, and she'll let us live, and then she'll tell us to go get the banner. Which, since we we already hooked it, we actually just need to like tap tap the actual thing so it lowers and goes back up and then she'll be like, yeah, that's it. Good job. You did it. And uh, now she's like, oh, you, I can tell you any knowledge in the whole world. And you're just like, where's my wife? And she's like, I, I, are you sure? You, that's what you want? Okay, I guess. And she tells you to go to Paraclave, which we kind of already knew, but now it's confirmed, I guess. Yeah. So the the other information she gives us is uh, she drops a tidbit that uh, f the frogs um, on the lake of Paraclave, uh, the frogs in this game are like uh, lake dwelling uh, sailor people. Uh, so they they sail that lake where Paraclave is located often, and they have charts of the lake's currents, which will help them get to Paraclave if they ever need to. So because of that, we happen to know a sailor frog, Carol, down in the jail. That is how the uh, warp's supposed to go. It just works the first time. <laughs> uh, now we found Silas in our own... Oh, pff, I picked up the rose. Uh, we found Silas in our old jail cell. Uh, apparently he's been arrested for the, uh, the murder of the jailer, which we haven't paid any attention to. It was one of the things that uh, the commander told us to go do. Uh, but instead... Uh, he's been charged for it, and he's been thrown in jail. But he gives us a whole bunch of backstory. Uh, I'll not not get into too much to it, so people can play the game and find out. But uh, the point is, we talk to him, so he stops whistling, because Carol, who knows how to get to Paraclave, will not talk to us when he's whistling. Uh, but anyway, we uh, disguised ourselves as the. The Dread Pirate Auto Powder Keg. So Carol just thinks we're a Powder Keg, even though we're like a mouse instead of a rat. And uh, he gives us the key to a chest that contains the charts to Paraclave. Uh, so we're pretty much ready to go for the end game. Take out the bottle. Thank you. So we're going to go back to the shore. Do another warp with the same bed. Oh. I messed it up. It wasn't sprinting when I hit sprint. What is happening? Okay, the game's being real finicky in a way I've never seen before. I, what the? Okay. You got Stiff Tilo. <laughs> yep. So Stiff Tilo is a pseudo softlock state. Um, it, it's caused by loading an autosave as you die. It's very, very... Uh, like tight on the time window, so it's actually crazy that he got. Um, I don't. I've never really seen this. Uh, yeah, so this, so you can. Uh, the, the way out of this is unfortunately reload the game, like close it completely, reload. Um, we have a save right there, so it's not going to waste too much time. Unfortunately, this initial load for this game is a little bit long. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you saw, like, whenever we were loading earlier on, it's it's nice and quick. There's, like, little need for a load remover or anything. But unfortunately, this load, this load's real bad. Yes, another annoying uh, thing with this game is that for speedrunning specifically, you know, you might drop a run uh, within the first couple minutes if you're, if you're going for a PB or something. Uh, you cannot start a new game from 
uh, anywhere inside the game. You have to literally close the game out, relaunch the game, and then start it from the main menu. Yeah, that's quite annoying. Uh, as for the the sequel, uh, they were they are actually still working on this game. Uh, they're still updating it. They just released it for consoles, so uh, it's probably not going to get a sequel anytime soon. But hopefully, at some point, we'll have Ghost of a Tale to the squeakle. All right. I would appreciate so. that joke more if it wasn't Elvin and the Chipmunks related. Why? Oh my God! It's not letting me sprint. What is happening? Uh, it's because you you're out of sprint when you do the window. Uh, just eat more food. You should be fine. Ugh. All right. Well, this is fine. Anyway, after that, um, little little thing. We have another autosave that's falling into the void, so that's good. Uh, we can use this to warp uh, straight to the shore. Oh, I actually died to that. That's interesting. I've never seen that before. I guess because I... Ugh. This game just acts weird. Like I said, it's, it's mostly made by one person. Uh, that person is actually a animation director, not a programmer. So the fact that they made this game is actually kind of incredible. It's really beautiful, and it, it mostly works well. So, um... Uh, the game is a little inconsistent and rough around the edges, but it's fine. We love it anyway. Yeah, you can see some of the grass uh, kind of loading in as he goes. That's just because he's got his settings turned down for the sake yeah. of the run, so he doesn't get too many weird frame drops. Uh, the shore especially is just awful at lag. Unfortunately, we have to play on an older version for some of the glitches to work. Uh, they fixed the shore lag and the glitches that we used to, to run the game in the same patch. Yeah. So we can't get nice, unlaggy shore, unfortunately. Oh, that okay. That's weird. <laughs> Apparently, when you're dead here, it actually drops the percents where you're facing, not where the camera's pointing. <laughs> yeah, so he's setting up prisons now for end game me stuff. Um, so have a another couple seconds. Yeah. So uh, the way the end game works is you uncover the chest here with some percents. Um. And then it turns out there's some evil green crystal here, uh, which brings all the zombie or all the all the skeletons back to life. Uh, and then you have to like run, find your friends, come back, and then they make you go blow up the chest three times. Uh, but it turns out you can actually just like place them all ahead of time. <laughs> okay, that's new. It was like angled, so you can place them all ahead of time, so they're all floating above the thing. Uh, and then when we come back, they'll still be here, and we can just blow them all up immediately. Also, uh, I'm sorry to say, but rip Grandma. Yeah, Grandma was evil the whole time, guy. So yeah, now she's gonna melt. The nice, the nice Grandma is actually secretly evil. Uh, she picks up. There was a bunch of green crystals in the chest, along with the charts. Uh, it turns out the green crystals were containing the green flame, which is the thing from the intro of the game that's never really touched upon again. Um, until now, when suddenly it's alive and it's killing everybody. Yeah, you might notice there's like this little orange halo around uh, Tilo right now. Um, it, the, if you're too close to the undead, they sap your stamina. It's uh, a way that the game makes you like supposed to be really tense and, oh no, the undead are coming. Uh, but it's really just kind of annoying for speedruns. It's also like not very tense because you saw me just casually slide past that guy and he tried to hit me but completely missed. Uh, you still move faster than the skeletons even when walking, so it's just kind of an annoyance. But uh, so we need to make our way back. Um, so that barrel that I told you to remember in the harbor from way back. It's finally going to come into play. Because uh, that barrel is actually very, very easy to warp from. Is the guard here? Nope, guard's not here. So we can go ahead, make a save in this barrel. 
Did it save? Oh, I'm dead. Well, that's... I can't actually save because I'm technically dead. You can guard armor and talk to that guard to get an auto save. He saw me. This is fine. Uh, I've never died here, so I'm just not used to this. So we just have to wait for him to... There we go. Do I have normals? I don't have a map of my current location. Because I walked back into the thing. Alright, uh, this is fine. We'll just do that walk again. Oh man, the game has done several things that I've never seen before today. What a marathon. That's never happened before. Uh -huh. It's the curse of the green flame. Of course. Green flame is coming from inside the game. Yeah. All the really low-key stuff it actually does in the game, it turns out it was just preparing for this one moment. Oh no, I've released the green flame into the real world. Good thing, good thing we don't just have skeletons lying all over the place to reanimate. That's fine. It was just a short walk. And now, now that we've loaded the autosave, we're we're normal again. Yeah, that was that's the one drawback from being the slidey thing. It looks funny, but you can't actually make quick saves when you're in that, uh, which is kind of a problem. So. Now we can quick save, and now we're heading back to the courtyard. And we can go ahead and warp right here. Yeah, this this warp is like completely free. You'll get it every time. And quickly run up to the commander and talk to him before the guards see you. <laughs> and uh just run all the way through here and talk to him and you're basically oh they were about to kill Silas uh, and then it turns out uh, that you know there's the whole skeletons rising thing which is kind of a bigger deal uh, but they're all stupid and they don't believe you so they all get knocked out uh, but fortunately the blacksmith and Silas are like yeah well we believe you we'll help you so we're gonna meet them down by the uh, by the chest. So one last save warp, and then we're basically done. That rat just like fell over. He doesn't have a sleep meter. That's weird. That ha that happens sometimes when they uh, load from being. Oops. There we go, that's how that warp's supposed to go. Uh, back to the shore. So interestingly here, uh, since in our current save, uh, there's all the skeletons about and they they do that thing where they sap your stamina. It's actually better to just go in your old save, because your old save is still recording your position, so we can just run around with it and it'll load to wherever we last stepped. So we can we can tap sprint here. And actually go all the way to these rocks and then load in our save and we'll go in front of these rocks. So there we go. And this is the uh, the no way back. This is the, the final countdown or something. The end boss fight. We run forward and they're just like, oh no, you need to grab the bursts and then set it on fire, but we already have them all right here. So we can just stand there and you know he yells at us to get clear but we can just kind of stand here and there they go that's all the hits that was the end boss fight and then gusto and fatality show up just because the best characters have to make one final appearance <laughs> but we're pretty much done we basically just have to say farewell to everyone and that'll be that'll be the end. Mash harder on the controller. Oh god, too hard, too hard. Alright, 
so uh, get ready on time. And time. Good well, job, Doctor T. It still has the uh, detonate the cask pop up. I've never seen that before. So yeah, we. Uh, oh, that's interesting. It equips your hat because he takes away your your pirate hat, but you still have the rest of the pirate outfit. Well, yeah. Yes, you... There's a bit of a cliffhanger for all those asking for a sequel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 